Uh, I remember the days, you know. I remember the days when I used to play Flash games on Armor Games and Congregate and all of those other websites. And they're still around, you know, they're still around today. You can even go and play those games that I played. This game reminds me so much of Frontier. If you know Frontier, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It is a merchant trading strategy game in sort of medieval times. And I gotta say, I really, really like this merchant life, which is exactly what this game is called. If you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. This video is not sponsored in any way. I'm playing it because I love it. It looks really, really interesting and very fun indeed. Now, quick note, I rebound the controls. The controls by default are bound on your arrow keys to move around the map. Personally, I'm not a big fan of that, so there are fully rebindable keys, which is absolutely fantastic. And I've rebound them to WASD just because I prefer that. Anyway, we're going to start a new game. And you can see here that I did start a little game just a minute ago, just to kind of get a little bit used to what's currently going on. And here we are greeted by the game mode selection. So you can decide what you want to do. Now, bear in mind that this Merchant Life is currently in Early Access, but it is releasing fully into a full version in, I, I believe, a day or so, actually. <laughs> so you can play it full version, straight up, as you're going to be seeing me play here. So, the first, first game mode that you have here is Payback. Your father has vanished and left you with his debts. Meet the growing monthly payments to eventually pay off this half a million coin obligation. Whoa. That is pretty... Oh, that's, that's very expensive. And then we have the campaign. A vague and unhelpful message eventually results in our merchant becoming embroiled in a deadly conspiracy that threatens the very kingdom of Peregrine. And that is also kind of interesting. And then you have the free play. Build your merchant empire your way without troublesome story or payback requirements. I'm going to play the campaign, because I think that's fun. And I don't need the tutorial, because I have already done it. So, let us confirm. And now we can play on relaxed, standard, or demanding difficulties. Standard is a balance of opportunity and danger. Did you know the peregrinish word for danger also means opportunity? This has led to so many unnecessary deaths caused by confusing signage. And you can see the various effects by clicking on this arrow here. So you start with 3,000 coins. You have attack chances, enemy numbers, and so on and so forth. If you were to go over to relaxed, your starting coins are exactly the same. But you have a much easier time of things when, it, when in regards to repair costs, healing costs, building costs, and so on and so forth. And then this is, oh yeah, you're definitely going to have some difficulties with the demanding one. Unless you are an economic genius, which I am not. So we're going to be playing on standard difficulty. I might very well just die anyway, so we'll see. Anyway, we are going to randomize my look. Ooh, I had a wizard there. I would have liked to have played a bit of a wizard. Ah, there we go. Slight wizardness, I guess, kind of. And we're going to be calling myself Jams, because that is my name. Not really. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, kind of like that. But anyway, horse name. Okay, Jeff. Gotta have Jeff as one of our names. And Hoofus, I gotta say, I personally love the horse names that they give you. I, I think in the uh, previous save game that I just made, I had a horse called Mr. Cloppington. And I think that that is absolutely adorable. So, oh, there he is. There, Lord Cloppington. There we are. Herbert, Lord Cloppington. So, horsing forth. Herbert, Lord Cloppington, Herbert. Ah, oh, okay. Cloppy. <laughs> okay, so we are gonna go for... I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a joke. Horse around. <laughs> We're gonna horse around. Yes, we are going to horse around. Alright, so let's do this. And now we get to select our background. So we can play as a as a soldier, a fighter, you know. Sailor is gonna be more resilient. Stable hand is gonna be fast. And cart wear from travel is reduced. And then we have a scholar who is smart, improved ability to avoid and flee from danger. You gain XP more quickly. And then you have the smith, which is industrious, better crafting and reduced building costs. And then you also have the seer, which is intuitive, useful market events, last longer, and a specialist at search missions. I believe I'm going to be playing as the scholar. While lay people apparently assume persons of knowledge, the scholarly cast, spend all their time with their heads figuratively buried in great tomes, 
they misunderstand the wider animus of scholarly life. It is not enough simply to know everything, as you do, but surely also to apply that vast knowledge to good effect. Being a scholar sadly pays very poorly. This widely assumed truth turns out sadly to have verisimilitude, oh, that word, in abundance. All right, so you can take a look at the detailed view if you would like a little bit more, well, everything. You kind of get to know exactly what's going on here. Chance to flee from some dangerous events is increased by 15%. XP rewards increased by 50%, which is, in my opinion, pretty insane. I was thinking either this or soldier, but I think we'll go for this. All right, so hello, this is This Merchant Life. And uh, this is me right here on my little cart with Jeff and horse around. And uh, this is exactly what we have to do. We have to buy low, sell high. It seems easy enough, but it's going to be dangerous. Bandits and worse on the roads will need guards to protect us. Gain a reputation in the towns, make some friends, allies, learn my way around, pay off that start alone. Anyway, let's get started. I'll buy some things cheap from the market here, then we'll travel to the neighboring town. There we go. And our first goal is to reach Level 3. Welcome to the Kingdom of Peregrine. You're ready to begin this merchant life. Your position in the kingdom is indicated by the red star. Use the, well, for me, the WST keys to move the camera around or move the mouse to the screen edge. Left click the town you are in and then the hub button to access the town hub screen. Right now you have permits to travel anywhere in the forest and heartlands regions. Luckily for you, this includes the capital at Archon. Okay. So, uh, here we are. This is us right here. This is me. I'm in Woodford at the moment. I can click on this, and that means I can go into the hub. I can use six hours to explore the town, and we could potentially then gain a couple of other things. As you can see right here, there are hints here. But for now, I'm going to be buying all of the lumber that they have, because this is timber, this is grain, meat, hides, iron, ale and you can even go to the second page herbs fruit and wool so first off i'm going to buy all the timber because i think that that is generally a very very good thing to do now the one thing you can do is you can take a look here and you can see exactly how many what what prices are going to be good for selling in the next town over so you can have a look here so the timber is actually not too good here by the looks of things so yeah this is also not that good Maybe, ah, it's good here. So we could go to Archon and then we could sell our timber and we could potentially buy additional timber from varieties of different other places and then make our way over to Archon and then we could sell it all for a pretty sizable profit. Or at least I will try to do that. Otherwise we can go into the tavern. Unfortunately, I'm not level two right now, so I won't be able to do that. I could, however, take a mission if I so desire and... Uh, Collect the letter at Randos, then return here. Sure, let's do that. Let's do that mission. So Randos is just over here, and it's going to take 43 hours to travel. Hopefully we're not going to get attacked. Oh dear. What's this? A deer flashes across the road, not far ahead of your caravan, quickly followed by a whistling arrow which apparently misses its mark, pinging off a rock instead. Not long after this, the arrow is tailed by its inaccurate originator, a young hunter. He notices the caravan, turns, and bows theatrically, then walks over, and we can potentially hire him. I think I will, although he is kind of bad, <laughs> isn't he? I will hire him for 100 gold. The lad is clearly not the greatest shot in the world, but he has a lot of enthusiasm for the concept of shooting arrows at things, and that is often half the battle for an archer. He doesn't want to stay, stay, no, he doesn't want to stray too far from home, but he's happy to stay with the caravan for a few trips before heading back. You hire him on the spot, happy to add another fighter to the caravan, and we gain some charm as a result there. Alright, so here we are. We have now reached the area, and we can collect our mission. And we can even take another mission if we so desire. I don't think... Oh, secret letter to Serenity. Don't think I'm going to do that right now. We can potentially upgrade our cart as well. You can also repair it if you so desire. I think we might want to do something about... Uh, no, there are no parts available apparently, but I think we might want to upgrade, but 750 gold, that's a lot, isn't it? So let's go to the market and just see. Ooh, yes, I... Uh, yeah, now problematic. I'm not going to be selling my timber here, to be honest. I think I'm just going to leave it as it is. And... Yeah, I think that's absolutely fine. I think we are actually full up. 
Now, we have security as well. We have our hunter here. Here you can view the fighters that you currently have protecting your caravan. You can check their stats and talents. Traveling the roads of Peregrine can be a dangerous undertaking, so it is wise to hire mercenaries to travel with you from place to place, ready to fight off attackers and protect the caravan. Each fighter will slowly lose morale as they journey with your caravan. If morale reaches zero, then they'll decide to hells with it, take their leave and head home. You can make additional payments to boost morale and keep them around longer, or set auto pay to automate the process. Bear this in mind so you don't find yourself woefully outnumbered in a fight. If a fighter's health reaches zero, then they are killed and no use as guards anymore, necromancy being banned at present. You can also check up on the heroes you currently have with your caravan on this sidebar. So you can see here that we just have this guy. So technically we can pay him, I will pay him, and then his morale will increase to 95 out of 100, which is actually very nice. Now technically we could go back to Woodford, or we could go to Archon and sell our timber. I think we should probably go to Archon and sell the timber first. This might very well be my undoing, however, because we might very well run into some very powerful bandits. We will see. The road here runs alongside a large orchard, separated only by a low rock wall which has partially collapsed in places. In these difficult times, and with such shoddy protections, it isn't much of a surprise to see a group of peasants in the orchard stealing fruit. Many of them appear to be quite young, some standing on the shoulders of others to reach the fruit, throwing it down to those below. They suddenly become aware of you driving past and all freeze as they await your reaction. So we can technically give chase or we can let them go. I think I'm going to be nice and I'll let them go because they are obviously hungry. Perhaps. Are they? Maybe. You wave in a manner which illustrates your disinterest. A wave which says, Take as many as you want for all I care. Lots of people are going hungry and the orchard owners are not among them, that's for sure. The peasants grin back at you and one throws you an apple as you pass by. You catch it and give them a salute and you gain some compassion. All right, that's very nice. I like that. And we got some hints here as well, if we need them, which I probably should not have closed, but anyway. You pass a downtrodden farmer on your way through Peregrine's heartlands. Not much to mark him out as a farmer beside the signature wide-brimmed hat. No sign of any harvested crops to sell. The fields lying fallow nearby seem to be his, a lot of good earth gone to waste. He tells you that medical costs for his wife have near bankrupted him, that he barely has any coins left to invest in seeds to plant. He could take some on credit, but fears that with loan rates as they are, he'll never escape from the debt no matter how merciful the weather, how strong the harvests. It's such a wretched tale that you might think it a fiction concocted by a grifter, but you've heard it told plenty of times now. Times are hard in the heartlands, as hard as anyone can remember. And we are going to ride on, apparently. You aren't able to give the man anything he can plant, and he refuses any talk of coins. So you depart and hope he finds better luck than he's faced up to now. So if I had some seeds, then I might very well be able to give that to him. I don't even know whether I could have seeds. Mm, maybe some grain. No, maybe not. I'm, not. I'm not entirely sure about that, but we'll see, I suppose, later down the line. Alright, so now technically what I can do is I can sell my timber. I now have 2,000 827. So it seems like timber has changed prices. Ah, oh well, never mind. Technically what I could do is I could buy ale. Ooh, this seems pretty good. Maybe we want to do something about that. Let's have a look at the ale cost over here. Ale is... where's ale? I'm not seeing ale here, so it seems like it is just normal. Normal cost then, I suppose. Yeah, seems like it. All right, well, that's eh, that's not really going to give us too much. But what about this? Hmm, some hides. We might be able to buy some hides. Yeah, we could buy some hides. Let's buy all the hides. And we have a capacity of 20. Yeah, that's the reason why we couldn't buy any more timber than that. Is there anything else here? No, just hides are above average in price. So I guess we'll just continue onward to Arrow here. Because I do want to try and explore a number of towns. And we can sell this. Ah, there we go. We, we gained a little bit more. We gained a little bit more than we otherwise would have gotten. There is currently a surplus of this resource. Prices are much lower than usual for six hours. That's fantastic. Let's buy all of that. Let's buy all of the iron. I have a feeling that the iron is going to sell for a very decent profit indeed. And what I should probably do is take another mission. Collect chest at Archon and then return here. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? 
So let's go, let's go back to Archon. Um, I'm a bit worried about this. We might very well be attacked. Nope, seems like we didn't. Okay, that's nice. So let's collect the mission. Mm, is there anything? Oh yeah, I need to get level 2 to be able to unlock some guards. So let's take a look at my uh, caravan. Yes, yeah, so here you can see the state of your caravan. A marvel at the beauty of your trait cart. Just below the cart you can see three key attributes. Mouse over them for more detail. How likely is it that the caravan will be attacked on the road? How likely is it? Ooh, it is three. Oh, I see. Interesting. And now we have skills here as well. Oh yeah, the skills sidebar is where you can unlock useful new abilities for your merchant. To spend an upgrade point and unlock a skill, select the skill category you want, and the skill then unlock at the bottom of the sidebar. And we earn experience from doing everything in the game, basically. So, let's have a look here. Expedience. Short-term cart stat boosts last twice as long, and horses respond well to yelling briefly. Then we have leadership here. Deployment time at start of battle increased by two. Everybody do something. Recruitment, plus one higher slots. Mm. Uh, purchasing. 25% more goods available to buy in all markets. Merchants always keep a bit back for their best customers. Might be something that we want to go for. Or increase caravan capacity by 10%. Yes, I would much rather have that than anything else. Thank you very much. And then we do have our... Uh, our profile here. Who exactly is your merchant? Your merchant's name, appearance, background, and level are helpfully listed. If you have unlocked any additional traits through your actions, then these here will be listed as well. That's actually very cool because you can see all of the different stats that we have here and we have a bunch of different friends as well that we have not unlocked just yet. And any missions that we have have been collected here. And you can abandon those, but you might very well have a cancellation fee as a result, which is probably going to be a bit harsh. So let's travel back to Arrow now. We potentially could be attacked, but we'll take that chance. It's fairly common to see a cart of some kind heading in the opposite direction. Often it turns out to be local farmers or villagers heading to the nearest town. This cart looks much like all the others on the horizon, but as it approaches you, you quickly detect that it is rather notable. It appears to be some form of traveling library, a rickety construction apparently on wheels and seeming to defy physics by moving along and not collapsing. It has a wooden roof and what appears to be a working chimney, which cannot be a good idea inside a moving vehicle. The traveling librarian, an earnest and surprisingly young fellow named Sebastian, explains that he has a world-class selection of books available to buy or to borrow, and I will be borrowing a book. The, li the librarian is happy to lend you a book for a small fee, which he requires up front, and we're going to be gaining some wits and 150 experience. Very nice. I'm happy with that. And there we are. We have a gold reward and we gained a travel bonus and we are almost level 2. Almost level 2. And, well, I still have my iron, which I probably should have sold at Archon. So let's have a look here. Is there anything else going on? No, nothing much there. So what I would like to do is take a look here. Are they accepting iron? Mm, I don't see that as as actually happening right now. So I guess we're, we, well, we have a target of two now. So uh, two and one. So I think that's pretty good. That's, that's quite nice. We could sell this for 20 each. I think I bought it for 13, didn't I? Or something like that. So that is not particularly good. So where do we have to go now? Let's have a look at our missions. We need to go back to Woodford. We need to take the letter back to Woodford. That is a that's a very long way, isn't it? It's a very long way. So let's have a look. Oh, iron. Okay, so Serenity is currently buying iron for a much bigger price. Oh, it seems like Randos is as well. So I think I'm going to go over there. It's going to take 77 hours. That's such a long time. And I mean, <laughs> we're having some difficulties here. That's for sure. I would like very much to not die. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we are now level 2, which is rather nice. And I can now sell. Oh, look at that. Look at that, 95, that's really nice. Let's sell all of those. I now have 4,200 gold. That is fantastic. That is a very, very nice price indeed. And maybe I'll be able to buy something else. Let's have a look here. Uh, silver, uh, it seems like iron is really good. So maybe I should have, uh, maybe I should buy some more iron as we go forward. Now I did get another upgrade point here. So let's have a look and see. Plus 50% XP from all explore events and settlements. You learn a lot from every mistake. So basically you learn a lot. Okay. Yeah, we're going to be, we're going to be taking that. Can I, can I not take that? Seems like 
Ah, buy charter from unlock skill bar to... Ah. Uh, okay, so buy the charter. Okay. Well, where's the, where's the charter? Hmm. I'm not entirely sure about that, but I suppose the best thing that I can potentially do is get cart enthusiast. Maybe try to increase the efficiency of my caravan. That's probably going to be quite nice. So let's travel to Woodford. I probably need to repair my cart relatively soon as well, by the way. That's probably something that I need to do. Okay, so there you go. I, I believe I did it, didn't I? Didn't I do that mission? Yes, I have done that mission. Okay, so that's fantastic. So let's go into the tailor because we can even just change our clothes. However we so desire. It is going to be quite expensive to do that, however. So let's explore a little bit, shall we? Can I do that? Nope, doesn't seem so. Explore event. Doesn't seem like I can do that at the moment. So I guess we will not right now. But aha, here we go. Okay, an old soldier. Let's hire him. And a local hunter. I guess we'll hire him as well. All right. So that seems good enough to me. And brigands on the road. Ooh, to randos. Let's take that mission and see if we can do it. I'm a bit worried about that. We might not be able to do it. Uh, I would like to repair. Can I repair my... Hmm. Doesn't seem like I can repair here. Seems like I might be able to repair somewhere else. So, I think I can repair at Randos, actually. So, we do have... I'm going to... I'm going to auto all of them, and I'm just going to pay them... Uh... I'm just going to auto all of them, actually, so that when they are getting too low, then it will automatically pay them. I think that should be pretty nice. So we're going to be fighting. Okay, so to, to battle, I, I, I've never done a battle before in this game, so this is going to be kind of interesting. Okay, so this is the deployment phase. The first icons indicate which direction enemies will attack from. Select a direction slice, then select your fighters and press assign to place them to defend that direction. Deploying each fighter costs a certain amount of deployment time, so you may not be able to deploy all your fighters at the start of battle. Each turn of battle, you accrue one to three additional units of deployment time, potentially allowing you to send more fighters into battle as it progresses. Unfortunately, I only have two fighters, so that might not work too well. The score in blue beneath each fighter is their security, or their attack power. The score in yellow is their defense, and the score in red is their health. When deploying fighters, press the cross on the fighter list next to those deployed this phase to cancel the deployment, allowing you to reassign them if you wish. For fighters deployed in previous rounds, you can withdraw them. When you're happy with the placement, press the movement phase button. Okay, well, this is interesting. Right, so let's have a look here. So, hmm, a solitary enemy will attack from this direction. Okay, so let's assign Roslyn over here. Can I, can I move him a little bit? Or maybe not. No, we'll just leave him there. And then we will put Silas in this position. And I want him to face the other direction, if at all possible. So can I can I change his position? Oh, no, we need him to be in the other area. Okay, okay, I understand, I understand. So what we want to do is we want to take him off there and we want to put him there. There we go. So now he's going to be attacking this area. That seems good to me. So let's do the movement phase. You can move fighters that have been deployed by clicking on them and then the direction arrow for where you want to move them. Pressing next turn will take you to the combat phase. During the combat phase, the player's forces attack enemies in their quadrant before enemy forces return the favor. The cumulative security score of all fighters is added with a dice roll of 1 to 3, then added to the total. Once the player attacks have been made, surviving enemies will attack in the same fashion. When the combat phase ends, if no side is victorious, then you'll be returned to the redeployment phase. To win, the player needs to defeat all enemy fighters or survive until the round uh, end of round 6. Ooh, okay, that's kind of harsh. All right, so let's have a look. Okay, so he can move up, down, or right. I don't really want him to move anywhere, to be honest. So I, I guess... Sh should I? No, I, d I didn't want him to move. No, that, you know, that, that, that is absolutely fine. We can just have him move there. I think that is perfectly good. And then we'll just do next turn. Okay, so now we can attack. Oh, he killed him. Oh, wait, wait. Defeat? I think, didn't we, didn't we win? I thought he killed him. Or maybe the enemy killed us. Oh dear. If the enemy were victorious in any direction, then they will get a chance to loot the cart. Each direction 
You lose in will, inc will incur one chance of getting looted, so losing a fight in multiple directions can be very damaging. On the left, you'll see if the enemy successfully looted the cart from any direction. If your cart defenses hold during the looting phase, then only one resource is taken from that direction rather than two. Okay, so... Right. So apparently I did lose. I'm actually kind of surprised. Okay. Well, that is kind of unfortunate. My mission has failed as well, but at least we can now repair our cart back to full. There we go. So we're now ready to go and do whatever we need to do. And uh, we could also reinforce our structure and things like that. But where's my security? Oh, they, they were awful. They were really, really bad, weren't they? Maybe I should have put them all in one area so that they could have all helped each other out, perhaps. And maybe an old soldier is not particular, not particularly, you know, not the best thing to go for. Anyway, let's explore, shall we? You are traveling down the main thoroughfare, seated on the cart, idly flipping the reins. It has been a long journey, and you are looking forward to a rest. Suddenly, a cart coming the other way lurches to the side and collides gently with your own vehicle. You are momentarily dazed, but were not unseated. You look across, and the driver of the other cart is a fellow merchant. He seems unharmed as well. The horses are fine, if a little flustered, and the carts themselves seem to have taken no structural damage. You jump down from the cart and walk over to the other driver, greeting him and checking the front of your vehicle for any damage. You are about to jump back aboard and continue on when seemingly out of nowhere, a strange fellow appears wrapped in a cloak. Have you been the victim of an accident where you weren't responsible? Did you suffer serious personal injuries, both physical and emotional? Hello, friend. I am Percy Peregrine Lawmaster, and I would like to represent you in a court of law and help you get the compensation you deserve for a small fee. Go away right now. Ignore. Pay no attention. Okay, the accident certainly wasn't my fault. 500 coins. We can choose any of these options. So I'm... <laughs> Uh, the accident certainly wasn't my fault, yes, but we did not suffer any personal injuries at all, so we are just going to ignore. There we go. We gained 300 experience, and we also gained some determination. Some things are beneath your attention, and this ghoul is one such thing. You jump back into your cart and ride on. There we go. That is actually really cool, in my opinion. I like that quite a bit. And um, I think we should probably hire another soldier, don't you think? Yes. That might make sense. All right, so let's go into the market. I would like to buy some more things. Uh, should I buy some more timber? Let's buy some more timber. And maybe we can maybe we can sell it somewhere. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where would be good. Maybe Archon is going to be good? Yes, Archon is pretty good, actually. So we should probably go over there. This is very tense, driving on the road. Oh, we made it. We made it without any problems. Kind of surprised. Okay, so let's go into the market and... Uh, oh, it seems like we can sell it for a small... Is that... Was that a small profit? I think that was a small profit, at least. So, I suppose that's not too bad. Alright, so definitely what we want to do is we want to take some missions. So, let's have a look. Collect peasants at Lancer, then return here. Find the hijacked horse in Arrow, Aten, or Lancer. Let's do that. Let's do the search mission. Arrow, Aten, or Lancer. So where's Aten? Where, where is that? I have no idea. Where, where is that? I know where Arrow is and Lancer, but I don't know where the others are. Oh, no, there's Aten. It's all the way up there. Oh, okay. Well, that's absolutely fine. Let's go to Arrow first, then. It's highly unlikely we'll be attacked at the moment, so I think we should be okay. And let's do the search mission. Did we find it? I think we did. Yes, I think we actually did, if you can believe that. That's kind of amazing. All right, so we're going to gain a thousand gold from that. Look at that. A thousand gold. And we also gain a travel bonus, of course. And we are almost at level three. But I think that's a good a time as any to finish this episode off here. If you would like to see more from This Merchant Life, or if you would like to pick it up yourself, then there is a link in the description. And otherwise, let me know in the comments if you would like to see me more play this. Yes, very good sentence structure. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.